Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CBS Theater's production of Electra. We are happy to have you here. Please take a moment to ensure that your cell phone is switched off. Completely switched off. If your phone rings, we will know who you are. We will know where you are. Now, say a prayer to Zeus, sit back, and enjoy the performance. No one, no one has ever seen a Greek tragedy. There are all sorts of opinions about it. But there is no one who's ever seen a Greek tragedy. Good evening. So nice to see you here. I'm Julia. I'm 23 and I'm from Sweden. I'm Victoria. I'm 24 and I'm from Denmark. I'm Rachel, I'm 26, and I'm from Denmark. I'm Liliana, I'm 24, and I'm from Italy. I'm Ida, I'm 24, and I'm from Norway, the northern parts of Norway. I live inside this fjord, and the mountains are so tall, and the water so fresh. <clears throat> In Elektra, the story told is about Elektra. Her father was killed by her mother. She wants revenge. She chooses violence. It all goes a long way back. It takes place in, let's say, Greece. In a palace. I did not have to look far for the images of horror. We know what happens in the world. This is our story. It takes place in our palace. Perhaps I'm naive for wanting to tell this story again. And perhaps not. We are the chorus. Here we are. Here I stand. Here we stand. It has been told a thousand times. It has taken place a thousand times. Electra. your land. Those are your people, Orestes. There, there, and there. You would go for a vacation, but that is your land. And where are you now? Here. 
Not here. Not here. And not here. Here. And where is your land? There. And where are you? Here. Wrong. Here. And your here has become another here. Because in your land another rules. In your country you would be killed. I want to live. Right, right. And what is that? Living. What does that mean? Would you like to be like others your age? Weak and only thinking of yourself. Games, music, drama. Girls. Is that living? I am no nationalist, but there are things that you simply cannot just accept. I educate you. I teach you all that you need to know. You've learned sums. You speak several languages. You can write. What else have you learned? Tell us. I shall live well. I shall honor my father and mother. I shall fight evil. I shall not kill. I shall not steal. I shall be a good citizen. My country shall be proud of me. I shall address my betters properly. I shall be happy so others will not need to worry about me. I shall mean something to other people. I shall take a wife. I shall not be jealous of what others possess. I shall always do my best. I shall do well things in my youth, but I shall always know that that is not what life really is about. And I shall not go too far, and later I will look back on it with nostalgia. I shall be as my parents have dreamed. I shall be a good son. I shall not use drugs, I shall be appreciated. I shall not trust the thoughts in my head. I shall adapt myself. I shall respect power to one day hold power on my own. I shall be grateful for my upbringing and die before my parents. And I shall do nothing that no one would expect of me. I shall know that adventure is nothing but an idle fancy. I shall work for a living. If I grow old, I shall be wise. I shall respect my fellow humans. I shall harbor no grand ideals. I shall not trust my own doubts. I shall give help wherever I can. <laughs> and all of that is useful. All of that. And you can see that I have taught you nothing useless. And this is part of that learning. How to know when to eat. I have taught you that. Walking. I have taught you. Breathing. Well, try to stop breathing. <laughs> try it. <laughs> try it. <laughs> try it. <laughs> exactly. I have taught you that. Shh. Taught you until you knew no different. It all comes from me. Boy, little boy, to keep your blood flowing, I have taught you. Seeing, I have taught you. Everything. So many things that you could no longer do differently. And this is part of that learning. People have faith in you. Believe that great things will happen because of you. You would not want to disappoint them now, would you? Whose land is that? It is yours. And how did you end up here? He saved you. And why are you here? Because the monster is there. The monster that calls itself your mother. The monster that keeps your homeland in her grip. The monster is driven only by our own lust for power. It does not matter what happens to the country. It does not matter how many casualties there are, your father was only the first. She manipulates. She plays people out against one another. She makes her own rules, is cruel, and survives through everything surrounded by her own gang without any morals. If I had not taken you away from her as a child, you would be dead as well. Your father, the hero of all Greece, returned from Troy after ten years, curious about his children. Proud of his victory, she welcomed him like a hero. She undressed him, she bathed him, and in his bath, she killed him. Shameless and cowardly, power had her in its grip, and she would never let go of it, not for ten husbands. She threw a net over him and hacked away on him with an axe. Not time for pity, no time for the love that once existed between them. You will love the slaughter. 
Your sister entrusted you to him because you were next in line to make a claim to power. He brought you to safety and raised you. Now, you are old enough to avenge your father. Apollo's power is great. He will never betray you. He ordered you to take this risk, and his oracle promises misery if you fail to avenge your father's death on his king. Killer! Like she is killed, he spoke. If not, it will cost you your life in the most horrific of ways. As a cancer, as a rotting tumor in your living flesh. You are a man now. I now put my staff humbly at your feet. From this day forth, I am your servant. I would have given my life for you. I am here to stand at your side and support you. Here is my staff. Here is my life. At your disposal, your humble servant, forever yours, my son of kings, my humiliated son of kings. Your greatness was a shining beacon in my somber life. Be the savior that everyone has waited for. Think on Apollo's words. Your servant. Rise. Go on, my master. Let us go. I follow where you lead. are prepared to spend far more time and energy on explaining and justifying a morally despicable act than they are to simply spend the energy to not do it. <laughs> what do I know? I'm just a girl. So am I. Yes. I'm just a girl. Yes. When I get home today, I will turn on the light first. Turn on the heat a little bit. I always turn it off when I leave. Better for the environment and stuff. I might grab some wine. There's some left in the fridge. It was nice yesterday when my friends were over. But I do not want to drink alone, so I put it back. I sit down on the couch for a while, pretending I'm having a good time. But I'm actually feeling rather lonely. In fact, I'm often rather lonely. It would be nice to have someone waiting for me so I could tell them how my night was. But there is no one. So I pick up the phone and I start calling people, friend after friend, even my mom, when all else fails. You don't have to be afraid of family. They accept you for who you are, quite different from the outside world. I think the only reason family is still a thing is because people are too afraid to be left alone. I once read that orangutan mothers throw the kids out of a tree, swing away, screaming as soon as they come of age. I feel like that might be the natural ways for human too. Goodbye, you're old enough now. Go build your own family. But it's different, isn't it? My mother accepted everything from me. Am I boring you? When she was a child, my, my mother had a little bird and, and it would always sit on her shoulder. And once she took it to bed and, and she lay down on the bird and then it was dead. She pretended it wasn't dead until the morning when she couldn't pretend any longer. She put it back in its case and her parents still don't know that it was her who killed a little bird. Valar Morgulis. If you associate good with God and call him good, and evil with the devil and call him evil, you end up with a very orderly little world. But it has little to do with God the devil, or the real world. I'm only 24 and I live in the West. I live in Copenhagen, lovely name for a city, Copenhagen. Somewhere in the West, there is a small city and it's named Copenhagen, and I live there. It's peaceful and quiet, nothing going on. A scream sounded through the night in this place. From the depths of the palace, in the royal quarters, where the queen sleeps, it sounded a scream that made everyone's hair stand on end, and it rang through the edges of the city. She had a dream, sent to her by the dead. The dead are angry, 
and they're lusting for vengeance. Yes, here I am. Here I am with my gifts and offerings. The godless woman sent me bearing gifts and offerings. She hopes to bribe the dead with empty, meaningless gifts. Fear rules. Endless darkness covers the house since the master's death. Once unconquered, unchallenged, invincible, a house in the grip of a never-ending night. And I am a slave I have to obey. You are Electra. She is afraid, and I have to make offerings. She has a nightmare, and I have to make offerings. Don't do it. I can't. Then she will. Should I let the grave be defiled by her? Should there not be someone here who loves him endlessly instead of that despicable monster? It is her offerings that upset me, but every moment I get to spend with my father is a moment that makes me intensely happy. Should I cast her aside and my own father with her? You are helping to maintain her position. You're making offerings on her behalf. I hate her. But you do as she says. I have no other choice. Look at you. Standing there with those pots and oils in your hand, it really is a beautiful sight. I could not care less what happens to me. You have to take a step. For truth, for freedom. It's more important than everything. It's more important than food, more important than drink, more important than your life's happiness. I would give up my love for it. You're brave. Give me your counsel. Give me the words to make this offering together. Should I? Say, bring these to a beloved man, that they're sent by the woman who loves him, meaning my mother. I can't do that, that makes me sick. Or is this better? Reward the sender of these sweet offerings. Reward her with murder for the murder she committed. Or do I just pour it out without words, without sentiment, like my father's blood was spilled? With my face turned away as if I'm emptying a bucket of dirty water. I truly don't know. Tell me. Say what you really feel. If Orestes were here, everything would be different. But Orestes isn't here. The hope of our lives. Yes. And then he will murder your mother. And you will be happy. He will be happy. Everything perfect. Finished. Paradise. Make your offering. We will stand with you. Promise me that you will always stand with me. I will always stand with you. 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 Promise me that even if it comes down to only us, you will still choose my side. I promise. Promise me that you will always believe in Orestes. I will always believe in Orestes. Promise me. Give your tears a way out. Let them flow to the dead as a shield against evil. Let them fall to the earth. Let our songs pierce the darkness. Hear us, old king. Hear us in your darkness beneath the earth. Hear the scream from the earth. What? is this what is that it's a lock of hair somebody was here before us somebody offered a lock of hair i'm afraid to say it my heart is flooded by bitterness a sword cuts through my chest my eyes fill with tears how it be that somebody was here that somebody comes here i'm afraid to say it take this throw it away i do not want to look at it but what if there is no if this grave is mine I am the one who makes sacrifices here. Throw it away. What are you doing to my offering? I am the one who makes offerings here. No one touches my offering except the one to whom it was offered. No one offers anything in the only place that belongs to me. And who has the right to claim someone's grave? I would not let the dead hear you if I were you. I hope the dead will hear me. It is all I ask for the dead to hear me. You should leave now. Leave me alone with my father. There is nothing for you here. Your father? Yes, my father. Leave me now. Leave me in peace. Could this be Electra? Could Electra look like this? Is that Electra? Are you Electra? You 
are laughing at me in my misery. Well, if I'm laughing at your misery, I'm laughing at mine. You're looking at what you wanted to see for a very long time. That lock of hair, it's mine. I cut it off to honor my father. Oh, this is a lie. It's a setup. It's a trap. My mother is testing me. Arrested? Is that really you? You will not find someone who loves you more. Open your eyes. You're so slow. Look here. It's me. I mean, look at this belt. Your hands were smaller when they wove the fabric, but you gave it to me to take with me. Is this my sister in front of me, Father? Is this my sister in front of me? How could I ever have been unhappy? Maybe I wasn't unhappy after all. Sweet friends, I have heard a voice I never hoped to hear. You look so different from how I imagine, and I'm so happy you look so different from how I imagine. It God's I am ranting now. I could be so insanely happy or so insanely unhappy, but what are you thinking? That I sat here unhappy day after day whenever I was thinking of you? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. My heart was shining. My eyes were gleaming. My skin was glowing. I was flying whenever I thought of you. When I thought you would never come, my heart died, my eyes dimmed, my skin turned gray. All I could think of was death. All I could think of were the easy lives of my enemies. But what is to happen now that you are here with me? Reach out to me, hold me. I have come alive again after being dead. You are my sweetest love. You are my sweetest love in four ways. You are my father's love. You are the love I never got from my mother. You are my sister's love, the sister we both lost. And you are my big brother who has remained loyal who will give me back my dignity. And here you are. And you're all mine. And how handsome you are and how strong. And you are the Orestes I have dreamed of. Now, children, saviors of your father's house, someone could hear you. It is foolish to stand in the way of that which everyone is unaware of. It is folly to awaken the monster before she dies in the black fumes of a deadly fire. Electra. Who is that man? Who is he and what is he doing here? You don't know. Don't you remember me? No, I truly don't. He said that you once entrusted me to him. He is the one who brought your brother Orestes to safety. You owe him a great deal to you see your brother in front of you because of him? Him. You don't know me anymore, Electra. Who are those two? Friends. Why, they too are here to help you, out of the kindness of their hearts. Orestes, can he be trusted? Yes. If that is true, I thank you. He is the man who, after you gave me to him, brought me to safety, raised me with his own hands, risking his own life. Come here, Electra. Such a joyous reunion. Everything will be all right now. Could we have a moment alone? private grounds. You have no business here. And who are you talking to? You are not to speak to anyone. Did you make the offer in the sick? What are you raving and ranting about now? I am not raving. You are. Your face is red. Where are the offerings? 
and Lectra is not to speak to anyone, stand back you. Now, do not come any closer. I am the queen here. I demand respect. Distance. And respect. Who is raving and ranting now? Well, my apologies, gentlemen, for going against the first rules of hospitality. I truly am sorry, but you cannot be too careful with a doctor such as she. Everyone gets what they deserve. Come. Look at you glaring at me like that. You and I can be not together. Honor our husband and father as mother and daughter. Because you murdered him. <gasps> she goes against the laws of hospitality harder than I ever could. You see now why I have to be so careful. Someday she could meet someone who could believe her. Every time she sees a stranger, she drowns them in nonsense about everything that has happened in this house. More often than not, she finds sympathetic ears, and then the queen's life is in danger. Black and white. Black and white, and I am black. No one in this land believes her anymore. They've all seen and experienced everything that happened. What could a stranger do who believes her ranting? I have to be careful. Our apologies for that. You look like people who can tell the difference between fact and fiction as most people often can. But very often people listen to the prattling of a child. Because it is so clear. So utterly in her head, it is all clear as day. It's all black and white. But the world is not black and white. It never has been. And it never will be. How often it happens that the queen meets somebody that treats her with disdain, or even worse, and this from people who don't even know her, which she has never been spoken to before, who have never even met me before, but who have their opinion ready about me before meeting me for the first time. I just have to fit into that role. That makes me so anxious to meet new people. I truly am sorry. And that makes her behavior inexplicable sometimes. Everyone has the right to judge me. But please, judge me for who I am and what I do, not for what you've heard. It could be. It could be there's no reason for hatred or for sympathy. Hearing this, she talks about me as if she's unsure of her life. But she walks here, she talks here, no one has ever lifted a finger against her. Time and time again, I let her do her destructive work. But it is what is in her head that is the burden that I have to bear. The daughter with a great sadness and the urge to do me harm. But she is my daughter and she always will be. How dare you call me your daughter? Because I'm your mother. You are not. You are nobody's mother. When you killed my father, you killed the right to be my mother. I know what a terrible deed I have done. I also know why. There is never any why for murder. When I married your father, I did not expect us to end up murdering one another or that one of our children would die and certainly not that he would be our child's killer. We would be the happiest in all the world. You know the story. Everyone knows the story. There was no wind. The fleet had to sail to Troy and there was no wind. The gods made their will known. There would only be wind if a child was sacrificed. And you know what that man did? Beloved father of hers. He decided to sacrifice her innocent sister, his very own daughter, the little sweetheart, just entering womanhood, Iphigenia, the joy of this house to the gods. She was their first child that the queen brought into this world with a pain you could never imagine. I pulled her from the womb myself. Who could do that? Who could kill their own child? And why? Because the fleet had no wind. And why did the fleet have to set sail to retrieve some whore? And could the whore's husband not sacrifice a child of his own? Or did death prepare one of my children? To a child of that slut? What kind of a father could do that? He paid for what he did. That is how it is. There is nothing else to be said about it. He 
brought it on himself by betraying those that he was supposed to protect. Everyone who could see that dead child would side with her and not with that man. You think that you are the god? Oh, oh no. No. I think I'm human. A very imperfect human who never could have known that all of this was to happen. I don't even know who I am sometimes, but at least I still try. I try to be honest. You are a monster. Sweet child. Whatever I am. Sorrow and grief has made me into it. Why don't you show some Empathy. Is this not what makes us human? Where people trample on the law, there is no place for humanity. And what if it would have been you that had killed? Then I'd be dead, no harm done. But it was not you. It was Iphigenia. Why was it ever denied? It had to be his favorite daughter. His most beautiful daughter. His most beloved daughter. His sweetheart. And that is not you. That is why you are here. That is why you live. You are stuck in your own reality. You are a child. Because a child sees only itself and not its relation to the world. You are less than a child. Because you don't even see yourself. And from time to time, people are tempted to believe you. You killed Papa. You killed my Papa. Do you hear me? Who hugged me with his big body, who protected me, on whose lap I could hide, who could conquer the world, who changed the house whenever he walked in, and there was nothing to be afraid of anymore. And when I was old enough to talk to him, you murdered him. And I have to listen to your disgusting excuses for the rest of my life. And do you know what? They're true. They are actually true, all of them. I don't want to listen to what you have to say because what I feel is just as true, so stop it. Shut your mouth, I don't want to hear anything you have to say, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. He's dead. That's what's true. And it was you who did it. It was the gods. It was you. No one knows the truth. And I shall challenge everyone who does know the truth to stand up, to shout it out. Once more, you force me to curse. You force me to harsh words. Why? You force me to cry. And why is that? I'm a woman. I'm lonely and I need help. I lost my husband. I lost a daughter. My little boy disappeared and this is my child, the sadness of my life. Give her courage. When I shall die, she will cry just the same. I will dance. I will dance until I drop. Motherhood is a cruel fate. No woman knows hatred for her child, even though it stumps in her heart. Why do you keep talking about being a mother? If you are such a great mother, where is he then? That son of yours. <clears throat> you would me. You would have killed him if he had remained here. He was stolen from me. I will give up everything to know where he is. Even to hold him in my arms for just a few seconds. My little boy. I don't know who took him. 
and I don't even know why he was taken from me. But to kill a child, why would I do that? Oh, I am no killer. There was something in my life that I had to do that went beyond my control. Oh, I was a tool of the gods. But to kill a child, why would I do that? What evil would have been a child? It would have been my child. I had you. I had Ava Junaya. I had it all. I would prefer to have the three of you and your father with you. If you ever meet him, if you ever hear anything about him, please tell me that his mother moves from me. How can you? How can I what? Lie, do not believe her, do not believe her. These good people are not concerned with that. These good people are concerned with a warm bed and a decent meal. Our sorrow is important only to us, not to everyone passing by. You just wait until your son comes home. He is grown now. He will not believe your little stories. He will not let his father's murder go unavenged. He will not be as stupid as you are. You will be able to ask him. A time will come when you will be able to ask him, and then we shall see if your deeds go avenged or not. I think that's quite enough of that. You insult our guests. You involve them in things that they should not be involved in. <clears throat> your Grace, we have news about your son. News about my son. You. About Orestes. You have news about Orestes, Electra. Electra, come, listen. Listen, it is about your brother. Orestes has died. Oh, Electra. Electra, come. Let me console you. This huh? is the message that we had to pass on. What are you saying? I am an outsider. I come from Phocis and was on my way to Argos for my own business. On the road I met a man. I did not know him and he did not know me. His name was Strophios. And he asked where I was going to Argos, I said. And he said, if you happen to go to Argos, go to arrest his parents and tell him he's dead. If you could do that for me and not forget about it. Ask them what their wish is, to have the remains brought to Argos or buried in foreign soil. His ashes are kept safe in the belly of a bronze woman, <coughs> and he was mourned as a beloved man. That is the message that we had to pass on. Oh, your message destroys everything that remains to me. Oh, what can I say? What can I say? This is the final curse. This is the final blow to this cursed house. A storm wind that breaks down everything that remains to me and takes away everything I held dear, all my Orestes. Oh. Now I have to mourn your fate as well. Oh, when will I ever sleep again? Is this my fault as well? Do you see tears in her eyes? Which one of us is the hard one now? Your brother is dead. You see how your life fits together. He would come and bring vengeance down upon me. Is that the only thing you can think of? You should in sadness and cry, weep. But all you can think of is me no longer being murdered. Is that how you're supposed to respond to the death? Of a family member. Electra, please. I cannot speak anymore. I cannot breathe anymore, please. Can we not share this? Show some humanity, Electra, please. Are you afraid? Mourn with me. Do not be embarrassed by my grief. My son did not have to 
deal with this swamp of death and misery. My hope was that he would come home one day, safe and happy. And that he would bring some peace to Electra. I can say goodbye to that hope now. I can say goodbye to all hope. What remains of me now? What kind of woman am I? You are so friendly, so hospitable. I wish I could bring you happy news. How much better would our arrival have been then? But we did not want to keep it from you. I had my promise, and your hospitality would have made my silence completely unforgivable. And your hospitality will be no less for this. I shall prepare the guest quarters. I will come back to you. I need some time on my own. My life lies scattered in pieces throughout time and space. I apologize. She is a liar! What sort of madness is this? Do you not value your life any longer? Do you simply lack the common sense needed to notice the danger you are in? If I had not sent her away, if I had not deluded her, then our plans would have been known in this house before our arrival. Luckily enough, I have prevented that. So stop with all the talking and being right! Because it looks like you simply cannot stop yourself. There's no need for discussion with a deed like this. It could have been done and dealt with. Orestes, this is your chance. She thinks you're dead. She's vulnerable now. She has no suspicions. She will return soon, and then she will be yours, as long as your sister keeps her mouth shut. No, I do not know. I do not know. I do not know if that is what I want. Orestes! Zeus. Zeus. Here stand the tormented children of the eagle that was killed in the net, in the embrace of the viper. These are his young, tortured by hunger. Too weak to pull father's loot into the nest. Look down on him and his sister Electra. One humiliated, one banished. Save us, Zeus! This is what you've chosen. This is the path in life that you have taken. You are the one to finish it now. It is your choice and responsibility. This is what you live for and have lived for. Don't believe the lies before your eyes. Don't believe the doubts that always try to ruin all the greatest of things. Yes. Yes. Kill that in yourself that is human and become the God that is able to do this. If you abandon us, the servants of the future king, and leave us helpless and naked in the enemy kingdom, what happens to our faith? We followed you. Do not abandon us when we are so close to achieving this great goal. Do not let fear become your advisor. If you allow this ancient royal line to die out, who remains to honor your father's altar? Think about that. Let the great house rise again from his grave, taller than it ever stood, although it may seem broken and desolate now. Do not be a child. Be a man. Father, poor father, how can I reach you through words or teeth? What breath can reach the place where the anchor of death has you trapped with life can overcome your darkness? <laughs> None. But tears about what has happened should be able to touch you. What can you say to me now that I need you? Powers from beneath the earth hear his prayers. Let hatred turn against she that screams hatred. Let murder be avenged with murder. Evil with evil. Take away his doubts. If a father is mourned with passion by his children, his tombstone will break and rise up into the light. Listen to me now, Father. It is my turn. Look at us, your children. A girl who is begging and who loves you without end, and a boy on the run 
and scared, supplicants both in tears at your grave. Where is their hope? What are they to do against destiny? Why did you not die beneath the walls of Troy, Father? Struck by the last of a stranger, you would have been honored and admired. No, I would rather you had never died, not in Troy and not here. I wish that you had never left us. Do not waste time with idle dreams, with wishes to be fulfilled. Dreaming is simple, but the knife brings results. The dead choose our side. Our mistress is doomed. Children, turn to killing now. Gods of the underworld, give us a sign. Where is your answer? Look at us. Last of the line of Atreus, help us banish from our homes. That's where we to turn to. Crush her body and spirit, Zeus. Kill her. Kill her. Give faith and hope back to this country. Give us the right to correct this wrong. Listen to me. Hear me, gods of death. It is law that those who spill blood on this earth will be chased, hunted down, there is a world order beyond mankind, but only men can enforce it. My heart travels with fear when I hear this sorrow. Courage leaves me. Give me hope, righteous vengeance. Only then can I face this horror. <sighs> with all this horror, only one thing remains to us. We have our mother to thank for this. She gave birth to us as young wolves, and she can no longer calm or control us. She mutilated his body with cruelty, with intent, so that his image, so horribly twisted, would cast an unbearable shadow over your lives. That was the honorless end of your father. And my fate was to watch powerlessly, to be caged like a dog. Think about that. Let it burn in your heart. Father, your son is calling to you. Choose the side of those who love you. I agree with my eyes full of tears. We are speaking with one voice. Return to the light. Help us face the enemy. Gods, give us justice. Gods, give us back the right. right! Father, give me power over your house. Then you will receive the offerings you deserve. Earth, let our father come to witness the battle. Earth, grant us victory. Send us justice. Fight for those who love you. Listen to my final calling, Father. Look at us. Your son and your daughter. Pity them. They are all that you have. Because of us, you are not dead, even though you have died. We are the cogs that keep the fisherman's net afloat to prevent it from sinking into the depth. Hear us, Father, for you are the reason Give us what we ask for, and you will save yourself. by mankind, cursed by the gods. The pointy sword driven by the power of whoever had power at the time. 
pierces the lungs, cuts off the ability to breathe, all in the name of justice. When I was born, the year was 1991. There was war in Korea. In Colombia, a civil war, war for the independence of Kambinda in Angola. In Somalia, a civil war. Afghanistan, Iraq, Sudan, all of them civil wars. Free Papua movement in Papua. Guerrilla warfare in Uganda. War in Myanmar. Conflicts in Senegal. Conflict in India. Conflict between India and Pakistan. Lebanon and Kashmir. War in the West Sahara in Basque country, Israel. The Gulf War broke out. War in Angola. In Iraq, there was another civil war with the Shias. All right, Sierra Leone. War between Slovenia, Croatia, and Serbia. War against the regime in Georgia and added to that, war in Djibouti. When I was one year old, the war started in Algeria. Somalia was held by 30,000 UN peacekeepers. Not a big success. When I was two years old, there were no new wars. Around 20 wars were raging. We will not name them all over again. My third year, insurgency in Mexico, war in Yemen, again Burundi, again Rwanda, Hutus and Tutsis. And Chechnya, border conflicts between Ecuador and Peru. Uganda. I was four then. In my fifth year, there was another war in Zaira, the so-called First Congo War. Then a civil war in Nepal between the regime and the rebels, 13,000 dead. I turned six, 1997. When you turn six, you start seeing something out of the world. You start to remember things. Not before that. <laughs> Seven years old, I get a bicycle. Eight years old. I was nine. My 10th year, Al Qaeda attacks the US with airplanes, President Bush, the start of the war on terror. The war in Afghanistan is a part of the war on terror. My teens are chaos. India versus Bangladesh. The invasion of Iraq. A conflict in Darfur, Sudan. 300,000 dead. 2 million refugees. Chad, Mexico, Israel, Lebanon, Somalia, Nigeria, Cambodia, Thailand, Iran, Eritrea, and Djibouti. Some of the highlights of my teens skipping to my 20s. The war on terror never ended since it started. 2 million died. I'm 26 now. Terrorism is still on the rise. Around 44 serious armed conflicts are going on worldwide.
Pretty too. Could I kiss you? Uh, just for a little bit. I never kiss a woman, and it might be the last thing that I do. I don't know you. I don't know you well enough. But you know who I am. Yes, but not as you should know someone if you're asked to be kissed. I might be dead soon. That's no reason to kiss someone. But how can I murder someone if I never kissed a girl before? A fair point. Or are I just going to isolate yourself from all of this? No, but that's not how these things go. That's, that's not how these things go. Electra, help me. How about you help us instead? One thing has nothing to do with the other. It does for me. You can help him. He needs courage. You can give him that. It's a request from human to human. We feel for you. We really do. We stand with you. That's it. It's not enough. All right. Hey, here. That's not what I mean. Why are you not giving him what he asked for? What does he want then? What do you think? He's not going to get them. Oh, are you holy? No. But that's not how these things go. How do you know that? How do you know how these things go? If I could do anything, if I had the power to do anything at all, I would. But I do not have that power. He's not asking that much of you. But it is what he wants, not what I want. You are abandoning us. I gave him a kiss. That's it. That was not a kiss. I can give him a kiss like that. That's not how these things go with us, not here. This man is facing the most difficult task of his life in our world. It is customary for a man who is facing a task like that to get to sleep with a girl of his choosing. But I have nothing to do with that. What are you going to do? Nothing. I'm not going to do anything. I really see no reason to argue over this. No, kiss her, Rusty's. Kiss her, she's no. yours. Take her, forever myself. No.
one comes out of battle unspoiled. Bring my mother here. Gotcha. The chambers are ready and a meal has been prepared. You will want for nothing while you are in this house. Even though your message have hurt me much more than you can ever imagine, our hospitality will be no less with us. Where is your commander? Sorry. I suppose screaming won't do me any good now. No one will hear you. Oh, every scream finds its way through the world. No one will listen. That what will happen will happen. Oh, it's you. Is it not? You are my son. You are here to murder me. And my daughter is helping you. Our children. Children becoming like their mother. I had a dream last night. She probably told you. I dreamt that I gave birth to a snake. And I swaddled it in claws. And if it was a snake, I fed it from my breast, but instead of sucking milk, it sucked blood. That is how the gods think of you. Do not be too long about it, Orestes. I do not understand you. Orestes, can I ask you one thing? Can I have a look at you? Can I please have a good long look at you? No. Will you deny a mother the chance to look at her son before she dies? Orestes, I saw you when you were little. Then you were stolen from me. Only in my thoughts I saw you playing. Even though you even slowly faded away, I imagined how you grew stronger. How you slowly grew older. How you got up to mischief. How you lay in your bed at night thinking of your mother. I imagined the son. And you imagined your mother? I thought how, how you would have your first bit of fluff on your chin, and who would have to teach you how to shave? Every day that you were not here, I let you age a little bit, and here you are. First you had to tell me that you were dead. Why did I have to suffer that stare? And then, you turn out to be alive, and I have to die. I, I cannot stop you. I don't know what you've been told. But can I ask you, as your mother, to have a look at you? In my eyes, you are still a little boy. And you'll be killed by a man, not a child. How does this make you feel? Oh, my sweet child. My sweet Orestes child. How does this make you feel? These breasts against which you sleep, from which you suck milk, from which you receive life. Feel my face. Feel my face. Would I not have recognized you? My face. 
How does this make you feel? This is what you are. We are part of each other. Orestes, I am your mother. Orestes, think of the oracle. Think of your vow. Let all the people hate you, but not the gods. Think of father. Am I all alone here? Is there no one here to help me? Help me. God, I carried you. I carried you inside here. These lips have kissed you a thousand times. This sweet little head with those few dogs little hairs. <laughs> These arms have protected you, have embraced you. They would have squeezed you to bits. I was so happy to have you. Now your father and I were with you. Our son. Such a fine little boy, so small. Such, so, such a small little boy. But still, our son. I'm sorry, then, sir. Oh, God. I feel like a living person begging. You are my father's killer. It was destiny. It was destiny that made me. Then you can blame destiny for this as well. So you will kill your own mother. No, not I. It was you who killed yourself. You never deserved to have had a mother. You never deserved to have had a father. Silence, sir. Put her there. Do what you must do, Orestes. It is a snake, a viper, who never even had to bite, but through her anger and her hate, she had poison enough in her. Please let me never have a wife like that. I would rather die childless. Mm. Ah! Orestes has fought and achieved the highest of murders. Our house can stay standing now. Our lives can start anew, finally, just as has its day. The gods sent him here. Now let us cheer the victory. The house is free of sorrow, free of killers, free of the evil fate that had its way again and again. His sword was sent by the gods and it was true. Now is the time to cheer the victory. It is the will of the gods. The oracle forced his hand. Finally, we see the light and justice has its day. The house has been liberated. Our house can stay standing now. And time will clear away every dirty spot. And happiness will be ours. Lovely sounds our song. The curse that once surrounded the palace has been lifted. And then slowly, the other thoughts arrive. The thoughts of regret. The thoughts of the things that might have been said. The thoughts of the missed opportunities. The thoughts of pain and escape. The thoughts that become a hand around your heart and a hand around your throat. The thoughts that take over your daily life. The thoughts that go on and see death. The only way out. The thoughts that are thoughts and are whirlpools and that need everything in your head to keep existing. 
that rage through your brain and leave nothing but blackness and it's uh, those are the furies the goddesses of vengeance trying to find their way inside you Orestes my son my friend my everything the gods are doing as they must now. And what should I do? You are always help me. Please, please help me now, please. It is simple. You are a murderer. Every place here will scream it. Flee! Flee! Every place will remind you of that terrible deed and make you doubt yourself. Flee! Will not make you weak. You've done it before. No, you cannot leave! What for it's all? What will happen to Electra? I will protect her. I will protect your little sister. Nobody needs to protect me! Know what the gods are doing to you! Know what the gods can do to you. You have responsibilities beyond just yelling things like a little child. <coughs> Electra, listen to him. He's right. Give her to me for a wife, and I will gain the lawful right to rule this land. You will flee, and he will ensure that this country will be ruled in your spirit. The spirit of freedom and openness. This is what you have accomplished. Your father is dead. Your mother, the monster, is dead. And you can ensure that the torch will be passed on. Think on it, Orestes. Before the gods befuddle your mind. I am not powerless because I am weighed down by murder. Tell her that it was me who raised you, that it was me who showed you the way, that it was me you could trust with every decision. Tell her that I will be her husband and she my wife. You are the man of this house now. Dare to take a decision that benefits us all. She will need to go on without you, but you will be with her through me. You know what the gods have decided. Don't cry, Electra. <laughs> he is right. He has always been right. And where would we be without him? He was always a willing ally in everything, and he has been on our side like no other, without wanting anything in return. You can love him. You can trust him. Love him like you love me. He is a great man. But why do I have to lose you when I have just found you? No, you will be with me because he is with you. Don't, don't, don't leave. Stop don't acting leave. like a child. Can't you see there are more important things? I've always been able to trust him. You have to go now. The Furies are approaching. Don't let doubt tear us apart. Demand from her that she meets your request. That that be the last words you say to each other. That she and the country are his, so that you can live on through them. Give me a word, Electra. Let those words be the last thing I hear from you and the last thing I see of you. Do not delay any longer. Don't let the Furies come any closer. Say it, Electra. Here stands your husband. Say it. I am your husband, Electra. I am your husband, Electra. I will be his wife. Swear it. Swear it. <laughs> Swear it on our fallen father! I swear it on our fallen father! Kiss me! There's no time for that! No! Flee, I will kiss no. you! Run! No. We will rule this land with your spirit! No. Farewell! <laughs> And he will find peace. I will give this wretched land the king it deserves. And I will make a woman out of you. Mm. <laughs> you have been a child for too long. You too have blood on your hands. But we shall try to wash it off. You are beautiful. Do you know that? You are mine. The first. Dance, Electra. Dance. Do as I say. Dance. Dance until you drop to the floor from joy. Because your mission has succeeded.
that is Greece. Luckily, the beauty of this country that has delighted visitors for centuries has withstood the test of time. And along the coast and in the mountainous hinterlands, you will find counted spots to retreat and find rest. The water of the sea with its lush coves offers a spectacular overview of all possible tones of blue. And normally, it is so clear you can see the fish. The rolling hills and the wild terraces and the unforgettable olive trees. These often praised olive trees with their novel trunks, many more than 500 years old, still provide olive oil. And you may also observe many orange and lemon trees that spread the delightful aroma next to acacias, plantains, myrtle blue rain, grape and rose truffle. Not to mention all sorts of different flowers in a variety of different colors. The slushing of the sea, the chirping of a thousand birds, the barking of donkeys, and the crowing of cockerels. That is the music of Greece. Added to this are the melodies of traditional Greek music, the unavoidable sound of the transistor radios of the youth of today. Authenticity and naturalness are the most attractive traits of the inhabitants, and their legendary hospitality stems back from the time of Homer. Present-day visitors get the feeling to be just as welcome as Odysseus was back in the day with the king of Aisha and his beautiful daughter Nausicaa. Home is everything to a Greek. Family life is close and devoted. Children, in particular, enjoy plenty of attention. It is a country that breeds culture. If you see the fishing nets hanging on the islands, as they've been for centuries, you get the feeling that the beauty of this emerald green country is eternal. I'm going there on vacation next year. I love southern men. That's my type. They have something masculine that Danish men don't have, like Oberyn Martell. But in the end, they'll probably marry a man who puts on home slippers in the evening. Maybe a Danish man. We will dream of our joy and of our life. We will mirror our joy into the joy of our children. And we will watch television. We will look at the world in the knowledge that we're not at all responsible for it. What do you think? Should I stay here forever? Is this a place to raise your children? To become a mother? Yes? I will think about it. Electra was played by Christine, Orestes by Jacob, the ward by Pechman, his helpers Belen and Demi by Robin and Swan, the queen Clytemnestra by Anatia, the matron by Monica, and we are Viviana, Julia, Rachel, Ida, I am Victoria. We were the chorus and we thank you for your attention. is open, the bathrooms are open. <laughs> if you're meeting someone here, we will join you in a second. Thank you all. Have a great night. Yeah.